Welcome to series two of cold water carping. And once again this winter, what we're gonna do is aim to show you guys how to get more fish on the bank through these colder months. Now this time we are down at Acorn Fishery in Somerset. And in this episode, I'm gonna show you how now I have brought maggots into my fishing and give you a little bit of an in-depth look of how I use them and things to remember when you need to look after them to keep them nice and fresh and nice and wriggly. But for now, I've got my last rod to put out and then I'm gonna run down on how I've started the session down here at Acorn. So there we go, I've got the rods out and now I'm gonna tell you how I've started my approach to this little session. Now I've turned up to the fishery, Acorn fishery is very well known. It's not a huge fishery. From my peg to the island is about 10 wraps, so about 40 yards. So it really isn't a long chuck. Now, the first thing I've done when I've got in the swim is I've looked for signs of fish. I've seen a little bit of fizzing to my left towards the island. So I thought, try and nick a quick bite. I'll get a solid, I've always got solids tied up. Just put a solid on one rod and I've cast it straight to the fizzer, hoping that I might nick a quick bite. For the rest of the time, I've got my marker rod out, I've had a little lead around and I've found a really nice area at about eight wraps, which is really clean and really firm. It feels like it's rock hard clay. So that's a really nice clean area to present some bait. I've then got my boilie crumb, chopped up a little bit of boilie. I've got some maggots and I've gone with about a 50-50 mix. So about 50% maggots to 50% boilie crumb and chops. I've put a little bit of bait out and then I've dispatched two rigs. Now the rigs I'm using have got to be one of my favorite rigs because they're just so easy to tie and that's the D-Rig, the Fluoro D-Rig. Now the thing with the Fluoro D-Rig is it's a great rig for a wafter and it just works really, really well. Not only that, when you've had a fish, if you blunt your hook, they take seconds to tie. Now I like fluorocarbon at this time of year because as the water temperature starts to drop and the water gets colder, the algae and things like that can't survive. So what happens is the water gets a lot clearer. So fluorocarbon links really come into their own at this time of year. Now I don't have a specific maggot rig I use because you can tie maggots onto the top of anything like a D-rig, spinner rig, German rig. You can just add that little bit of movement. And I think that at this time of year, that little bit of movement can just make the fish want to go and investigate more than seeing just a little yellow wafter there or an orange wafter or maybe even a boilie. Just that little bit of movement makes them think, hmm, what's that? They drop down, super amount of attraction from the maggots, they pick it up and wallop you into a fish. So what I'm gonna do now is I've got two rods, bang on the money with a little bit of bait around them. I'm gonna reel in the solid bag and I'm gonna swap that over to another one of these D-Rigs. And all I'm gonna do, instead of casting a little solid bag around, I'm gonna cast around one of these rigs with a little mesh bag of maggots on it. If I see any sort of signs of fish, I'm gonna try and nick one. But hopefully what's gonna happen is my baited area is gonna start doing fish. And if it does, I'm gonna put all three rods on there and see if I can string a few together. So as you can see, very typical at this time of year, earlier on, we sat on the chair, we were able to do a little bit outside. There was a little bit of sun and a break in the clouds, but sure enough, within an hour, we've got a load of rain. Just typical of this time of year, which is, which is where being organized and things like that really comes into it. So you, you know, you've got your rods out, you've got some rigs prepped up and ready, so you're able to rechuck and things like that. But while we're sat here, I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about maggots. Um, some of the things I look out for when I'm buying them, um, some ways to look after them while you've got them on the bank. So the first thing is to keep them nice and dry. You don't want them getting damp because when they get damp, they're able to crawl out the bucket. That's when you can have a right nightmare in your bivvy. Maggots everywhere, you know, they're getting in your sleeping bag a lot. So try and keep them nice and dry. Try and keep them out of the rain. Always try and let 
the air keep to them as well because that keeps them alive. You can send them dormant by putting a lid on them, suffocating them, and they will die. Well, they almost die. They just go completely dead. It's not completely dead. They're not dead. They're dormant. And then when you allow some air back into them after a few hours and a little bit of warmth, they will start moving again. But you do run the risk of killing some. Now, at this time of the year, I do like to use live maggots because I want the movement. Now, when buying maggots, something to keep an eye out for is the little sack that's inside them. There's a little black sack. Now, if that's nice and big, they're nice and fresh because that's actually a food sack where they've got some food that they actually sort of survive off until they change into, into a caster and then obviously into a fly. So when you buy a maggot, you want nice fresh maggot. You want them clean by the shop. So what they do is they'll run them through a riddle. So, you, or you can do it yourself. You can put them on a riddle, allow the live ones to run through. All the dead ones will stay on top and you can discard them. Then I like to keep a little bit of maize on them. This keeps them nice and dry as well. And it also stops them sweating. There's nothing worse than your maggots getting warm, getting damp, and then all of a sudden you open them up, they're full of foam where they've just got really, really warm. They've started to sweat and then they get really wet and are able to escape out the, buck out the bucket. Now for me, I'm a big red maggot fan. Don't tend to use white that much. Um, I've always just liked red. Don't know why. It's just my, my maggot of choice, I suppose. Um, other things you can do is obviously keep them cool if you're keeping them for a long time. So refrigerator at home is normally the best one, although some people's partners will not agree with that putting maggots into the fridge, but that's where they're kept in the tackle shop because it keeps them cool and it, again, it stops them sweating. I've got quite a nice little outhouse that's quite cool. So I know I can keep them in there for a day or so. Just checking on them every six, seven hours, just giving them a stir, a little bit more maize if they need it. Um, and then they'll be ready for my session. So yeah, so if you're using maggots, always keep those things in mind. Keep them dry. Um, keep them cool if you're not going to be using them straight away. Um, check the sacks when you're buying them to make sure they're nice and fresh. And try and buy them the night before, really, or the same day. Now, where we're at Acorn, they've got a tackle shop on site. So I bought these maggots this morning. I've seen them get delivered, so I know they're super, super fresh. So the rods have been out for a couple of hours now and as you can see it's already getting dark it's the one thing about fishing at this time of year that makes it quite difficult is the fact that you don't have many daylight hours you know the light comes up about half seven eight o'clock it's then light till about well now it's half past three and you can already see we're losing the light makes it def very difficult to film but it's going to be dark soon i'm pretty confident we'll bite through the night to be honest with you um i know the lake does do a few night bites i've got a really good spot it's nice and clean i know the rigs are presented i've got a little bit of bait there there is some ducks knocking about, but they're not diving on my bait, so I'm not too worried about them. Um, I haven't seen any fish show. There has been a little bit of fizzing, but I am thinking that could be leaf debris rotting down, releasing a few natural gases out of the lake. But for now, we're going to head back in the shed because it's starting to rain, get the tea on, and hopefully wait for the bite. So here we go, fish number two. I actually had one about an hour ago. Got it all unhooked and in the sling. And I thought, I'll go and get Gaz up so we can get it filmed. And the rod rattled off again. And uh, it just seems like the fish should move around a little bit. I was just laying there in my shed. I didn't feel as comfortable as I do in my Tempest. I felt like I was cheating on my Tempest by sleeping in the shed. And uh, I had a little liner. And I thought, oh, here we go. And it rattled off. And I've got a lovely little scaly one in the retainer. But no sooner as I put the rod back out and this one had tanked off again. So let's get a couple of snaps under this one and I'll get the other one out. <laughs> So 
So have a look at that. What an absolute little perler of a carp. Absolutely stunning. When I seen it in the net, I was like, ah, that's a proper pretty one. Now, it doesn't matter what size they are to me. All I care about is catching a few fish, especially when it starts getting a little bit harder at this time of year. And I really feel that adding some maggots into your mix and then adding them to your hook baits can really make a huge difference. This one was absolutely nailed on the D-Rig. I used the D-Rig. It just works so well with the wafter and that addition of the maggots. And you need something that you're super confident in because the last thing you want to be doing is losing fish when they're hard to come by at this time of year. So anyway, let's slip this little one back and hopefully there's another bike before we have to back up. So there we go. Nice little 24 hour session down on Acorn Fishery in Somerset. Managed to get a couple of bites, which were quite difficult to come by, to be honest with you. Um, checking around the lake, it, it hasn't really done any fish. So they're obviously not like out having it, you know, hard or anything like that, because the other guys have been struggling as well. And I definitely think that little addition of maggots into my mix has made the difference in me catching a couple of fish and not, because Judging around the lake, the lake's pretty full. You know, I think there's only two swims available and the other guys haven't caught anything. So there we go. What more can be said apart from the fact that that little addition, because they're all using boilie and pellet as well, that little addition of maggots seems to have made the difference. And tipping off me hook baits just like that has definitely caught me those extra couple of fish. Anyway, I hope you've really enjoyed this another, another little episode of Cold Water Carping. We're into series two now and we're always looking for new venues that you want us to go to to see if we can catch fish in the colder months to help you guys get more fish too. So for now, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and I'll see you in the next episode.